Good afternoon, everyone. Great to have you joining with us uh, with our noon devotion. Uh, my name's Wayne. I'm the pastor at Coldwell First Methodist. In case this is your first time with us, um, just an extended special welcome if you are joining us for the first time. So, um, I want to ask a question for our devotion today. What weighs you down? What brought this on was I saw a news report about a thing called the Doomsday Clock. Well, I've heard of that before, but I didn't realize that we are now at the supposed closest point to midnight, and midnight is supposed to represent that moment when it all goes kaploi. Um, the clock is set in January, and this January... Obviously, it was before the coronavirus thing had really exploded. They set the clock to 100 seconds to midnight. So to quote Wikipedia, here's what they used to measure it. The doomsday clock is a symbol that represents the likelihood of a man-made global catastrophe. So, uh, yeah, that can weigh you down. When you look at all the factors they put into it, and we're 100 seconds to midnight, the closest we've ever been since they started it in 1947, um, that can be a way down thing. And certainly watching the news can weigh that down even more. Now, Jesus said to us, these things are going to happen. Uh, so there shouldn't be a shock factor with this. But nonetheless, it can be um, a heavy weight. So where does your faith come in when things weigh you down? When you look at that bigger picture and we have a doomsday clock and it makes it look like that bigger picture is not good. Um, does your faith set you free in, in those moments or does your faith weigh you down? Uh, sometimes it can weigh us down. So I'm going to read a passage from 1 John, not the Gospel of John, the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. He says, Here's how we know that we hold to the truth. And here's how we put our hearts at rest, knowing that God is watching. If our hearts judge us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. And he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not judge us, we can be bold with God. So sometimes I think uh, if we let our faith drift into kind of too much of the religion thing and too much of the works thing that we feel we've got to get through this list of things before God will listen to us or bless us or honor us, um, then faith becomes something that weighs us down because it becomes a to-do list. And so the very thing that should be carrying us through heavy times is the thing that we land up carrying. And religion uh, or faith as religion is a very burdensome thing to carry. So our faith should carry us through moments of doomsday or through moments of despair. And I love how John put it in his letter. He said, here's how we know, so here's how we put our hearts at rest. We know that God is watching. We know that God is involved. That's how we put our hearts at rest. God is involved. He says, if our hearts judge us, so then there's that religion thing where it's all kind of even our faith is doomsday and God doesn't like me and God doesn't like us, all of that sort of thing. Or I've got to do these things to appease God. John's saying that's not the way we want to go with our faith. What we've got to remember in those moments is that God is greater than the feelings of our heart or that sense of judgment that our heart can bring. God is far greater than that. In other words, our faith in God needs to carry us because God is stronger than any feelings of doomsday we may have within our own hearts. And yes, we want to watch the news to be informed, but at the same time, news just tends to focus on the ultra-negative or the ultra-collapsible points in life. And that can be very, very overwhelming. There needs to be that balance. We've said that before. There needs to be that balance and that something needs to outweigh that. And according to John, God outweighs the things of our hearts. Dear friends, if our hearts do not judge us, we can be bold with God. So let's be bold in our faith and bold with God because our hearts aren't condemning us. They're not judging us. Uh, God is the one who is accepting us and wanting to move us to a different and better position in life.
So we're going to close in prayer. Um, this time we're going to focus on medical staff. So they are being honored this week. Some cities are having great flyovers with uh, with uh, the thunder, Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels. Um, here we have the odd helicopter, but there's a way that we can pray uh, so that we can do a great flyover in support of the wonderful work that our medical people are doing in this community. Let's pray. God, we, uh, we thank you that you are bigger than our hearts, than our own self-judgment, uh, than any religious uh, thing we create out of our own faith. You are bigger than that. You are bigger than any sense of, of doom that we may feel. Help us, God, to, to link in with that, to attach ourselves to that. Today, we do sp pray especially for our medical staff. Um, so often we don't realize what it is that they are putting themselves on the line for or how difficult it is for them to balance their lives in the midst of taking care of people with this COVID disease. Um, God, watch over them. Help them to have a deeper sense of your presence around them. And we give you thanks for the gifts and the graces that they have to enable us to make it through this. These things in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, awesome to have you with us. Again, we don't do a devotion on, on Friday or Saturday. We'd love to have you join us on, on Sunday morning for the uh, worship service and the message there. And we'll pick up again on Monday. God bless you. Bye.